Hey guys, it's Claire Aiken, the Fiddle Leaf Fig Girl, and today I want to talk to you about everything you need to know about notching your Fiddle Leaf Fig plant to get it to grow new branches. So first let's talk about what notching is. I know it sounds a little bit scary and to be honest, I was kind of intimidated by the concept of notching a few years back before I tried it, but it really couldn't be simpler. There's no reason not to try it. You really can't fail. Um, and so I'll walk you through kind of what it is. But the idea is you make a cut or an injury in the plant that disrupts the flow of the sap. Within the sap, there are hormones. So there are growth suppression hormones and there are growth augmentation hormones. So auxins or rooting hormones is one hormone that gets your plant to actually grow new branches or grow new roots or grow new leaves. And so there are different hormones within your plant, but basically when you make a cut or an injury to your plant's bark, you disrupt that flow. And that tells your plant to actually grow a new branch at the node that is beneath that cut. And so I'll talk to you just a little bit about the basics of fiddle leaf figs. So the nodes are where your leaf comes out of your plant. And so it's very basic, it's very easy to see. You can see the places where the leaves used to be and and you can also see sort of a ring around the the stem of your plant where the node is. Between the nodes is called the internodal space. And so you're gonna make a cut within the internodal space, but you really wanna do it right above the nodes. You just locate a node and then you just cut right above it. The reason you cut right above the node is because within the node where the old leaf has grown, there are actually dormant leaf buds. And this is kind of creepy and kind of cool. It's like, you know when they tell you that women are born with like all of the eggs that they're ever gonna have within their lifetime? The same is true of plants. There are dormant leaf buds within the nodes. And so even though one leaf has already grown and maybe fallen off and died, there are baby leaf buds in there. And so if you make a cut right above it, those dormant leaf nodes will actually sprout out and branch into new branches and new leaves. And so that is why you make the cut right above the node because within the node are those baby eggs or uh, leaf nodes that are dormant within your plant. And so it's a really cool idea that a lot of people don't know. So the reason that notching works is because plants are always competing for light in the wild. And so they're always trying to go taller and also to go farther out to get as much of their share of light as possible. And so whenever the plant is injured in the wild, it responds by putting out new leaves. One of the ways you can think about notching is that when you cut your plant, it thinks that you're trying to kill it. And so it will actually double down for its survival and create new branches where that injury is, which is, I think, a really cool idea about houseplants, that they're so resilient and so tenacious. So when you notch a plant, you actually disrupt the flow of rooting hormone to make your plant focus on the nodes right below the cut. And so there's actually a corollary to notching, which is called nicking. So in agriculture, a lot of the times, if they want a plant to focus its energy on the branch above, they will do what's called a nick below that branch to get the plant to grow more of the branch, to actually put more energy into the fruit of that branch. So you'll see that a lot in agriculture with apples and pears and peach trees. So how long does it take for your plant to respond? So one of the cool things is this happens pretty quickly. So once you do your notching process, you're gonna wanna watch your plant, make sure it's in really good health. And between two and four weeks, you'll see a new branch start to form. So it's a pretty quick process and I think it's a lot of fun to watch. And I recommend marking the areas that you notch so you can figure out which ones are successful. We see between about 30 and 50% of notches be successful. And I'll do a whole video on why your notching may not be successful, so subscribe if you're interested in that topic. So you can actually notch almost any type of plant. So ficus are really uh, specific plants that are very easy to notch, but you could do any plant with a wooden stem. You know, any plant in the wild outdoors you could notch. Um, as far as inside, you know, rubber trees, ficus benjamina, uh, fiddle leaf figs are all very responsive to notching. Okay, so now I'm gonna walk you through the notching process. And so the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is decide where you want new branches on your plant. And I'll do a whole separate video on how to decide where to get your plant to branch. But once you've decided that, you wanna make sure that you have clean and sterile shears. So these are the pruning shears that I use. I think they're beautiful. What you do to sterilize them is you can just wash them with hot soap and water or you can use rubbing alcohol, but make sure they're clean because you can transmit infections if you do not clean your shears. The second thing that I really like to use is a rooting hormone. So this is our propagation promoter, which is an auxin rooting hormone. So after you make your cut, you could put a little of this on it to actually give a signal to your plant to branch. And so you can find a little bit bit more success in notching and getting your plant to branch if you use a rooting hormone on the cut itself. 
So the reason they call it notching is you're actually gonna wanna cut a notch out of your plant. And so I recommend doing a 45 degree angle cut and then doing a second one that comes up 45 degrees so there's a missing triangle of the bark on your plant. That is the notch. A lot of people think notching is just doing a slit in the plant. While that can be successful because it disrupts the hormone flow within your plant, once the injury scabs over and the hormone uh, flow is repaired, then your plant will stop putting energy into the branch. And so I think that's the reason that a lot of people fail with notching is they just do one slit. They don't actually cut a full notch. The full notch takes longer to heal and so you have a better chance of branching because during that time, the hormone flow is disrupted and all of the plant's energy is going to creating a new branch out of that leaf bud, if that makes sense. So a couple different methods for the technique that you use. So the first technique that I like to use is to hold the sharp implement and simply just push about a quarter of the way through the branch. You never wanna go more than one third of the way through the branch. The reason is, first of all, it's damaging to the plant and you don't need to go that far, but also it may compromise the plant and it may um, fall over. And so one quarter to one third of the way through the stem is sufficient to create an injury, but not over injure your plant so that it's no longer stable. And so what I like to do is just hold the implement and just punch into it just about 25% and then go a little bit lower and punch up about 25% to remove that notch. And so that's probably the easiest way. Another way is to kind of slice through. Um, so, you know, it just depends if you want to hold the knife steady and push or if you want to slice through. With the slicing method, be careful because if you go too far, you will end up pruning your plant. And in that case, you know, you're gonna lop off that part of it. It will still branch at the node beneath that, but of course you'll lose you know, the growth above that. So a failed notch can turn into a pruning, which is fine and that's certainly happened to me before. You'll know that you have gone far enough in your notching cut if you see white sap come out of your tree. You'll wanna kinda of wipe this off because it can be a little irritating and sticky, um, but that is when you know you've cut far enough. And so once you see the white sap, what I recommend doing is using a little bit of rooting hormone or our propagation promoter, put a little bit on a cotton ball and just dab it onto that injury or that notch and that will give additional auxins or rooting hormones to tell your plant to create a new branch at that level. And so that is the basics of how to notch your fiddle leaf fig. What I recommend doing is, you know, on a small plant, maybe try three different notches at once. It can be a little bit traumatic to your plant, so you don't want to do too many too fast. Check back in a month, see which ones have taken, and then if you still want new branches, you could do another two or three. If you have a very large fiddle leaf fig, I would do five or six notches probably max to make sure that you're not traumatizing your plant and then just see which ones take. We see usually, you know, about half of these notches take and actually form new branches. And so, um, you know, you kind of want to go slow to not over damage your plant, but you want to get as many branches as you're looking for in the long run. I hope this video was helpful on how to notch your fiddle leaf fig. If you want to learn more on this topic, please click to subscribe because I'm going to do a series of videos on why your notching may not be working if you're having problems with notching and a few tips for how to make your notching more successful in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.